And these days, it is extremely important that we can get to know each other better, understand each other, learn from each other, and the fact that we have these Norwegian movies here at the festival that anyone could come and watch, I think is a very good opportunity. Movies can help uh, build bridges and help uh, people understand each other better within our country and between countries. It is uh, a good link to advance and promote a common understanding. Her Excellency also spoke about Norway's selection for the festival. I think um, the artistic director has made a good choice. He did so completely on his own, not influenced by us. There are three Norwegian movies uh, that are presented here. Very good ones, I would say. I would uh, recommend uh, that um, you and all listeners would come, have a look at the program and pick more than one movie from the Nordics. Of course, some of the Norwegian ones, but uh, also colleagues from the other Nordic countries have good uh, movies to offer. You are listening to Radio Romania International. You are back with us on Radio Romania International. In the spotlight today, we're looking at the third edition of Nordic Film Festival held last week in Bucharest. Attending the opening event, hosted by the French Institute in Bucharest, Sweden's ambassador to Romania, Her Excellency Therese Huden, expressed her happiness about Nordic films returning to cinema halls after a long break and spoke about Swedish films selected for screening. First of all, we're very happy that we're back alive. It was uh, online for a long time. We have a lot of Swedish film that we could still show online, but this is different. Uh, it's really different when we can have their openings and we can have a live audience because it's, of course, it's the individual experience of, of watching the movie, but to do it together with other people adds to that experience. Also that we do it in the Nordic setting. I think that makes people curious what we do up there in the north so i think that helps the films are about things that are also known to and part of the romanian society it's not different it's about people's lives it's about experiences and i think it is a way to make our societies closer to each other hopefully it creates a curiosity that lasts People want to see more films, perhaps travel to Sweden. The films that we have for the Nordic Film Festival now, it's about sports, it's about experiences in life, it's about things happening when uh, you plan your life and it doesn't come out as you hoped for. And I think those things are experiences that we all need to go through. Representing Finland in the group of Nordic countries hosting the festival was Her Excellency Ambassador Mariut Akola, who argued that initiatives such as this will help people reacquire a taste for cultural events, of which many have been robbed due to the COVID pandemic. We are very proud of resuming the Nordic Film Festival again after two years of pandemic. And uh, there was a great interest uh, two years ago. And uh, of course, we hope, we really hope that there is still this interest in the Nordic films. And uh, I'm sure because after more than two years of uh, pandemic and people being inside and no events and etc. So I think it's a good basis for people going to the cultural events. So we hope that there is an interest and the people come and get acquainted with the almost the newest films from all five Nordic countries. Much like the previous speakers, Finland's ambassador agreed that Nordic film is a great boost to the visibility of Nordic productions, many of which have been popularized with the coming to Romania of streaming platforms such as Netflix. Definitely, even if it's uh, only four days and uh, we have had this break. But uh, I think that this Nordic Film Festival brings a very good visibility and awareness of the Nordic films. And I have been here in Romania also. I have heard comments that of one Finnish area, it's, I think it in English it's called Borderland. Because the Finnish film industry is quite still quite small compared to the, the Danish or the Swedish. So we are very happy for, I mean, that the Netflix, of course, everybody, almost everybody has some, seems to have a Netflix. So it's a good chance to, to raise the visibility and also the quality of Finnish films and series. I mean, it has improved a lot. 
So we are getting more and more even the global awareness, I mean, including the Hollywood. And I must tell you one story that these past two years, pandemic years and the summers, they have been Hollywood productions filmed in Finland because we didn't have, uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, we didn't have any COVID. So the Hollywood production companies, they came to Finland. So that was also the big visibility for our film industry. In turn, the head of mission at the Embassy of Denmark in Romania, Jakob Zomer, highlighted the importance of organizing such a wide-scale event after the pandemic break. Well, I'm very thankful that we could uh, have the festival this year. A lot of work has gone into it. I want to quickly underline that uh, my job was basically just to show up. All the real work has happened behind the scenes by employees and volunteers, and they've worked so hard. Setting up a festival where five countries contribute and with the still with some uncertainty about the pandemic, it was a huge job setting up the festival. So we're just so happy that it's actually possible this year. Nordic countries are very proud about their cinema. So so being able to share that with Romanians and inviting Romanians to come and enjoy Nordic films with us, I think it's a, it's a great cultural exchange and we're just so happy that we can have it this year. Nordic Film Festival is a good opportunity to boost the visibility of Danish productions, Jakob Sommer argues. I really hope that Romanians will see Nordic Film Festival and think, oh, I remember seeing, you know, another round. Or today, just this evening, we have a Danish movie called Wildland, which the main actress is Sisa Babette Knussen, which is the main actress in the TV series Bone, which is quite famous in Europe and Romania as well, I've heard. So, so I certainly hope so. And that's a wrap for today's edition of In the Spotlight. I'm Vlad Palku. I'll see you on the airwaves. Next on Radio Romania International, Simply Folk. Welcome to Simply Folk, today featuring violinist Tudor Pana. At the age of seven, he started studying violin, accordion and piano, but when he turned 16, he devoted his time entirely to the study of violin. At 19, he became a member of the Barbu Lautara Folk Ensemble and two years later, he joined the Chocorli Ensemble. He traveled the world alongside famous vocalists. Listen to him next playing the violin accompanied by the Chocorli Folk Ensemble. <laughs>
with that, our broadcast in English for listeners in North America, the West Coast, and in Southeast Asia, beamed on India, has come to an end. You can listen to our next program for North America, the West Coast, tomorrow at 3 hours UTC on 73, 75 and 98, 50 kHz and to our next program for Southeast Asia, beamed on India, at 5.30 hours UTC on 17.760 and 21.550 kilohertz, as well as on the internet at www.rri.ro. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write an email at engl at rri.ro. Goodbye.